Look at the for four chan. <laughs> Hi, Skurb. How are you? I am eventually sending out my email. There we go. Not my email, my uh the other one. The social media. The the I'm live tweet. Maybe I should just automate this. I am good. That's not a question mark. And it's not like I'm not good. I had acupuncture today. So I'm uh wobbly. <laughs> Not in a bad way either. Um, I always fall asleep during acupuncture. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Um, Fortune. Game of Fortune. Sorry you have to listen to me type, type, type. Hold on, let me, let me mute. Is this Sesu filled with holes? Okay, thank you. If you say it's fine, then I'll believe you. Let me try and find, like, an actual, like, uh, what's the word I want? Image <laughs> that I could put in my Twitch? Because they don't got no gifts. Let's see. Can I just steal this? Bless you. Bless you. So, today we learned that Alex is apparently allergic to nutritional yeast. He has been going through it, as the kids might say. <laughs> Malnutritional yeast! <laughs> That's good! That's so good! Oh man, yeah, pretty much though. So. Oh man, like we had it yesterday. Um, yeah, he's dying. <laughs> we um, what do we do? Uh, I had some um, I had some bloating and like gassy issues from it, but like that's just been my body for the past half a year. So like my body's just like, oh. Well, we're dealing with this again. And, um, so I thought, because, you know, I've been, like, I've been, like, trialing onions again. So I thought it was an onion flare-up. And I was mad, because I was like, really? I've only gotten through two days of onions? What the fuck? Um, so then, you know, I was, like, putting it in my, uh, my, my journal. My little journal. Why don't I just, hold on. I'm gonna switch. <laughs> There we go. Um, so I was putting it into my little journal of things like, you know, I can't, I don't think I can eat more of this. And then, um, my Alex texts me this morning and he's like, I'm dying. <laughs> I am bloated. Cause you know, I was like, we usually do like, oh, how'd you sleep? How'd you sleep? And he's like, not great. And he's like, yeah, I think it was a nutritional yeast. And I was like, oh, so, um. A small part of me was looking forward to stopping having to eat onions, but unfortunately I had to eat half a cup of onions today. Um, but yeah, so I'm great. He's dying. He came home or scared the hell out of me coming home early. I'm like getting out of a meeting. I hear the door slam and I'm like, a burglar? <laughs> well, actually, 
the first thing I thought was, um... The first thing I thought was, like, the fire alarm stuff. Which they didn't do yesterday. Did you notice that, Alex? They didn't do the fire alarm yesterday. Um, <laughs> like, no one came in. Uh, <laughs> you're picturing me eating a half cup of onions like potato chips. No! I'd cry. I, I sauteed them and I put them into a burrito bowl. Uh, the burrito bowl was tasty. It would have been tastier without the onions, but... You know, it's the cross I must bear. Um, so... Yeah, I'm just like minding my own business. I hear the door slam and I'm like, hello? <laughs> and then I don't hear anything back. And then I get up and I'm like, hello? And like, um, we have like a display case. Like, um, if I looked out of where I am in this room right now, and I look at the display case, I can see a little bit into the kitchen. Because, you know, it kind of... Glass, how does it work, you know? Um, reflections. Uh, so I, like, get up and I peek over a little and I'm like, Oh, that's Alex. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, hey, I'm dying. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Don't forget to drink your ginger tea. It should be cool by now. Go drink it. It'll help your tummy. So yeah, he's like, sneezy, just drippy, sneezy, and bloaty. So we're gonna have pho tonight. I'm looking forward to the pho. Um, let me open this game. Actually, before that, really quickly, I gotta finish sending this email. Um... It's okay with you. I will take DMC. And if we happen to use it, I will take on there. On there as a credit. Why doesn't this full screen open? Oh, I also didn't switch. Hold on. There you go. Uh, no, I'm not done. I need one more thing. I need the the content warnings. Uh, let me grab those. There we go. I really like the music in this game. It's jamming. <laughs> CW Santa Nutella in human form. Uh <laughs> There we go. Let's pin it. Um, can I edit this? No, I can't edit this. Hold on. I'm gonna unpin this. <laughs> and let me try again, because it's, it's kind of wordy. Hold on. Um, BW mentions of intent and graphical. Yeah, that'll work. Look, Pando, I live here. Why are you welcoming me? Oh my god, I pinned the wrong thing. I'm sorry, Skirb, I pinned the wrong thing. <laughs> Alright, let's try this one more time. There we go. <laughs> oh man. You almost forgot about the- Yeah, the young old lady! <laughs> it's okay, it's my first day. That was my first day a year ago. A year and change. Oh, I didn't finish writing this email. Um. Right. Hold on. I would have tried to get this done earlier, but I was jamming on my piano. Uh, let's see, let's see.
anyway i hope you guys are having a good day today uh what did i do what did i do i worked <laughs> also thank you for hydrating panda um i worked i joined i'm kidding um i did a lot of work actually <laughs> um i held a meeting of the of the minds um it was a good summit we had cookies in our minds i'm sure you did chores and was a little silly how are you a little silly it's okay to be a little silly billy here and there um I think. Okay, there is my email. I'm done. All right. It took two- you brushed Reggie until he couldn't stand it anymore. It took two hours. He loves that little brush. He's allowed to have the silliness. He's allowed to be- you're both allowed to be a little silly. I- I love this for both of you. Okay. As a recap as to what happened last time in Game of Fortune, uh, we are- a dishwasher at a local pizzeria that may or may not be, um, I'm going to say it's Pizza Hut because I watched Code Geass last week and now all we, all, all of us think about is Pizza Hut. Um, so they work at a local pizzeria, which may or may not be Pizza Hut. And then, um, we have a sick mother and we have been looking for a way to help her. Uh, we got this really sketchy giveaway that was like, hey, if you win, we'll we'll save your mom, ha ha ha. And we were like, might be a scam, but let's do it anyway. You know, we don't got much, we don't got much else to do. Um, we won, we needed to bring a partner, so we bought our friend, who is a line cook, who is, um, human gender swap sans, um, Every single facet of her personality is Sans, and um, as Undertale fans, we love it. We love to see it. So she is uh, a human gender swap Sans. Um, so we got into a van. We drove all the way to this uh, remote place that looks nothing like a hospital facility for our mother. We ran into a bunch of other pairs of people. Um, that some were like, "Oh yeah, I'm here for a hospital." Others were like. Bro, what the fuck? And then others were like, you mean the game? And we're like, what game? So, uh, at some point, like, these, uh, how do I explain? How do I explain the, the show, the game runners, the show runners? Uh, it almost feels like a cult, but, like, some, some people come and, you know, they tell us about this game of fortune and, uh, yeah, Illuminati mass people. Um... I don't remember everything that they said, but they specifically said we will not get hurt. They specifically said we would not die. We would be okay. And then at uh, 4.44 a.m. exactly, a door opens that we walk through hand in hand. Of course, we had to walk through it. Everyone, the 16 people had to walk through it in four minutes. And they're like, yeah, we got to hustle you through. Like, it really takes a minute per person to get through the door. But, you know, whatever. Uh, and now, here we are. My eyesight flickers for a few moments as I stir awake, my consciousness clawing itself back to the forefront of my mind. My first instinct is to sit up, rub the back of my head, and get my bearings. After a few blinks, things start to become clearer. I can see that I'm sitting in some kind of lounge. My memories slowly sleep back to me as I recall everything that occurred only a few minutes ago. And, looking around, I can see all the other participants either relaxing or just waking up like me. Hey, Clyde, you're finally awake. I wish I could get, like, a Sans TTS, 
but pitch it up just a little and just play it just for her, just for her lines. <laughs> I wish. It doesn't take long for Devin to catch my attention as she walks towards me and sits down. She is giving me the bedroom eyes, it's true. The bedroom I just woke up eyes. <laughs> How you feeling, bud? We just walked through a door of literal light. I... Uh, I guess I feel fine. Just confused? Light doors will do that to you, I'm told. You're still able to keep that rise cracking mouth of yours despite everything, huh? Well, we're alive, so I figure that's no reason. I figure there's no reason not to keep cracking jokes. Yeah, we might be alive, but where the hell are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Lilith interjects as she walks towards us with the sheepish Laura in tow. You don't understand any of this nonsense either, do you? I can't say that I do. Right. Doors of light don't just render you unconscious or transport you to weird places. Doors of light also don't appear out of nowhere. Don't get smart with me. It's unusual, and I don't like it. Um, I know it's weird, but it doesn't seem to be all that bad. Laura finally speaks up as she nervously glances between Lilith and I. <laughs> Stop being smart, you dumbass. <laughs> Hi, purr. Hello, purr. How are you? Flop, flop, flop. Pat, pat, pat the purr. I hope you're having a good evening. Bored. Are you still at work? Yeah. Slow. Well, I hope you can vibe out here and, um, have fun. Also, you guys, let me know. One, let me know that the volume's on. <laughs> and two, let me know that it's not too low. Per, would you believe they let me sit here for 20 minutes with no audio on Hollow Knight yesterday? Oh my god. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay good you hear the sands ding that's all that matters great <laughs> oh purr purr as another resident uh undertale fan what do you think about this girl in the middle wait what do you think about her what are her vibes to you what kind of vibes Th thank you thank you we're validated we're all validated we're all good. <laughs> we, we've been doing this the whole time last session and this session. We're like, Sans, that's Sans. <laughs> yeah, just wait for her to open her eyes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, some of the others here don't seem all that worried, so it's probably fine. Also, to answer your question about how's the game so far, we're still kind of in the intro. I spent a lot of time talking about random names last time. <laughs> Just name the game Name of Fortale. <laughs> Laura, I know you mean well, but the fact that they aren't panicking doesn't mean that we're in an ideal situation. We could have been drugged and carted off to some remote facility for... for who knows what. Drug us. All 16 of us. And without anyone noticing or putting up a fight. They had plenty of opportunities. They could have done it in the trucks on the drive here. I don't know. It sounds like you're just trying to explain the unexplainable. <laughs> That's pockets. Does everyone have their kidneys? <laughs> Finds a random stitch that wasn't there before. Ah. <laughs> yeah, she does have very pretty blue eyes. Like another certain skeleton we know. <laughs> Maybe some divine being really did just teleport us here. Spare me this spiritual hippie bullcrap. I entertained it because I thought we'd get something out of it. Not get sent to... Wherever the hell this is. I mean, look around. Do you see any exits around here? This place is so weird. And most of the others are acting like it's perfectly normal. <laughs> if anything, I find it more suspicious that more people aren't freaking out. Or at least questioning what's going on right now. She's got a point. 
Some of the people here seem too lax about all this. That's probably because they know what's going on, right? I mean, some of the people here clearly, no, clearly know what this place is. Can you shut up, lady? I'm... Okay, you see this man, Purr? We're gonna go into the game and beat this man up. Because he's been nothing but a pain in my ass the entire time. William shouts from across the room. You're so damn loud that we're gonna miss the announcement. What did you say, you little punk? Get him. Get him, Lilith. I said you're loud and you need to shut your trap. I can't even hear myself think. We're here in the Clover Lounge and all you keep doing is yakking about how this doesn't make sense. Lilith's eyes narrow as she strides up to William. Lilith, let's go. Lilith, punch this man's daylights out. Lilith, you got a beaker? Just hit him upside the head with it. I'm rooting for you. Ah, Lilith, don't. He's just... A kid? I'm 20 years old. I'm not a kid. He's old enough that he should know when to speak and when to keep his mouth shut. Don't waste your breath. You'll get the answers you want soon, anyway. And you don't want to make an enemy of, re right of me right now if you can help it. Punk-ass kid. You better be telling the truth. <laughs> well then, William, act your age and not your shoe size. God, so true, Per. so true. <laughs> he is. While his tone could certainly use some work, he's certainly not saying anything false. Hmm. For the moment, it seems like Lilith has been palcated enough to keep her from socking the kid in the mouth. I'd been hoping that we'd get a moment to rest and cool off, but as soon as Lilith steps back, a voice calls out to us. Seems like fate has other plans. Hold on, let me mute real quick, because there's like... Uh, actually, never mind. There was a police car. I think it's gone. Or a fire truck. I don't know. A siren. What a spectacle! I didn't think we'd get a spat like that until we got started. We have such a lively group here today, don't we? The voice is unfamiliar, and looking around, it seems like most of us are trying to figure out who was speaking, or at least where they were. Up here! Draw your eyes up this way! Our eyes turn upward, and we're greeted by the sight of a woman perched on a throne mounted to one of the walls. I should get up there. I mean, I know how she probably got up there, but how'd she get up there? <laughs> Do I finally have your attention? Oh, it's so wonderful to be able to see your beautiful faces. There are even a few here that I recognize. Did you really miss me so much that you wanted to come see me again? I'm flattered, truly. Oh, but don't worry. I don't play favorites. And I'm sure I'll learn to love all of the newcomers as much as the veterans. This lady exudes an air of knowledge, elegance, and control. As if she sees everything, understands everything, and, in a way, governs everything. Who are you? You weren't with us in the clover field, and I don't re remember you standing in line to go through the gate. You think she snuck in? Maybe? We were in the middle of the line when we went in. No one snuck in. Yeah. We were the last ones to jump in, and no one tried to cut in front of us or anything. Ah, oh, you're so cute. I could tell you've really got no idea what's going on. And no one will tell me! H hey! Oh, don't worry. I'm going to explain everything in detail shortly. Yeah, she's really- I mean, look at her. She's- She's ah my goddess, modern. <laughs> but suffice to say, I don't need to sneak into my own home. My own realm. Your own realm? Then, are you the fourth divine? Is that what people are calling me now? It's fitting in a way, but also so tacky. Like putting diamonds in gold and then lining them with silver, only to dip them in chocolate. <laughs> Fur, you're so cute. That's kind of awesome if you ask me. I don't remember these people. Jade, who are you? I don't remember you. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, Jade, I think I remember you. I think you're the... I think you're the... I think you're the drummer? I think you're the drummer. Bleh. Just way too tacky. You can call me that out there, but don't use that title here, okay? 
Well, what would you have us call you then? Uh, is Philip the old man? Well, what would you have us call you then? Ah, that's the thing, isn't it? I was gonna go with Jin or Zero, since they both have four letters. But then I realized that they were all... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But then I realized that they were already taken, and the last thing I want to do is steal someone else's identity. Plus, Zero isn't really my deal. I'm all about the number four, you know? We get it! We get it! You like the number four! We get it! You're the god of death! <laughs> Would you want us to call you four, then? <laughs> Ore-sama. That's even worse. It's way too on the nose. I suppose you've got a point there. Yeah, she is like cat face. So after much deliberation and discussion with myself, I ended up deciding that you shall call me Belle. Four letters, and it's elegant, simple, and has a bit of mysticism to it, don't you think? It works as well as any other four letter name. I don't remember who this man is. I don't remember these people. <laughs> Belle. Right, okay. And you're some kind of divine ruler here? Now you're picking up what I'm laying down, Clyde. Though, let me guess. You don't really know what happens here in my realm, do you? Think Richard was the painter? Maybe Clyde was his dad? You're right! No, no, no. Clyde's the main character. Um... Yeah, Richard was definitely the painter. Um, I think, uh, I think, uh, 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 the other dude. I think Philip was his dad, maybe. Maybe. Uh, not really if I'm being honest. It's kind of weird to be in a place that supposedly is holy or spiritual, I guess? Honesty is a good virtue to have, and someone needs to admit not knowing, so those too prideful to say can get answers, too. I can tell you that I am very much a divine being of sorts, though I understand your hesitation. Perhaps you'd like a demonstration. Oh. Oh! Anime! Give me one sec. I'm just taking my charcoal. Okay, all set. <clears throat> Belle hops down from her seat, gently floating to the ground as though gravity had been loosened just for her. <laughs> Delicious rocks. Think of a number, any number. That tends to be a tricky thing with these large-scale 10-plus character death game VNs. Hard to develop out the characters to be memorable. Even just remembering all the names can be hard. So, you're right. You're right. I think one of the things they could have done... Uh, character portrait. Right here. Right? Right here. You got space. Just put it right here. <laughs> like, I remember their faces. They're all unique. They're very unique faces. I just... I don't remember names. <laughs> uh, also, we have ads in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you so much for watching the ads. I really appreciate it. Uh... You don't have to watch pre-roll ads and I gain ad revenue. If you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing to me. You'll get access to my subscriber emotes. But otherwise, I'm just happy you're here. Don't feel like you have to. All right. You can also add expressions in those to make the conversation more engaging. Exactly, exactly. Hey, Purr. Hey, Purr. You like visual novels. Listen. I've been doing a top 10 list. Um of the demos that I played. Uh, I really gotta send you one of the demos. Um, it's probably the most amazing visual novel I've looked at in my life. Like, technically. The technical aspects of it are amazing. Um, a spoiler alert to you guys here. Uh, the visual novel Am Amarantis that I played is my number one. It's my top pick for uh, the Steam demos. Um, yeah, it's still in demo form. I don't know when it comes out. Hopefully this year, but it looks really good. Pando, thank you for... <laughs> thank you for welcoming the bot, Pando. <laughs> Alright, think of a number. Any number. 
You're going to try and read my mind? I can do more of that. In fact, think of a number, a color, and an animal. Th thank you for treating Pando. He's very... He's very ornery today. He's allowed to be. He's cute. He's allowed to be ornery. Alright. If she's claiming she can read my mind, I'll just think of something ridiculous. Eight magenta giraffes. Oh, excellent choice. And... Voila! <laughs> Belle snaps her fingers. And a plume of blue smoke appears nearby. Then clears to reveal eight magenta giraffes. What the actual hell? Yeah, where? I want to see them. Eek! Are they big? Are they small? <laughs> that wasn't in the budget. See, I'm okay with them not showing it, but like, I need a size. Because if they're like eight big giraffes, there's already 16 of us in here. Are we all just cowering in a corner? Like, we're all relaxing and lounging. So if eight normal-sized giraffes came up out of nowhere, that's a little wild. That's a little wild. But if they were like human-sized giraffes, I'd be like, okay. They're the size of house hippos. Hey, Skurb, question. It, what do you mean by house hippos? Okay, it's clearly something I don't know, because Per knows. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. Uh, what the heck? How did you... This is my realm, so I can do all sorts of fun things here. Like this. Uh, should I wait until after the ads to continue? Um... Uh, I'm just gonna go, it's fine. <laughs> Belle claps her hands and the giraffes shrink into blue chickens. Then, as if that isn't enough, she kneads them all together into some kind of dough, which she tosses in the air. By the time she catches it, it's a fully cooked pizza. Would you believe she clapped her hands and the ads kicked up right at that moment? <laughs> That's so funny. All right, all right. I'll I'll wait till the ad's finished, <laughs> and then I'll reread that bit. I hope. I hope that my pho today is good. Oh, good. That's good. Okay, so she clapped her hands. The giraffes shrunk into chickens, blue chickens. And then she kneaded them together into a dough, which she tossed into the air, and by the time she caught it, it's a fully cooked pizza. So, question. Is it a blue pizza? Or is it a normal pizza? Second question. When did it change? If it changed to a normal pizza, when did the colors change? I don't need the devs to answer this. I just am very curious. <laughs> Also, if she served you this pizza, would you eat it? Ooh, Skurb really does got the good questions here. Is it Little Caesars or Papa John's? That's true. Because if it's Little Caesars, I'm eating it. If she offers me a slice, I'm eating it. But if it's Papa John's, I don't know. I really, I got to think about that. Because Papa John's, it's regionally good. Oh, oh, Skurb. Oh, no. <laughs> I have very fond memories of Little Caesars. You're a fan of Happy's. I've never heard of Happy's, but I trust you. If you say it's good, then I trust you. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think, um... I think where I'm from, uh... Domino's was the worst? <laughs> you miss Pizza Pizza. Is that, that, so I'm sure that's a place, but that's also like the Little Caesars logo. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you mean a place pizza pizza or the Little Caesars, okay, okay. Then they cut down to the $5 pizzas being their main shtick and since then the quality's been shit. They actually, uh, they introduced a new thing. 
I watch Hulu, so I get a lot of ads. And I would buy adless Hulu, but I get it for free with my phone plan, so I deal with the ads. Uh, the point of this being, um, $5 pizza. They've added in, ooh, what is it? What is it? It's some sort of, some sort of crazy thing. Um, ooh. I forgot what it was. They did something new. I don't remember what it was, though. Uh, no, it's like... They make it into cheese bread? They make it into sticks? What did they do? Um... Hold on, now I need to find out. What did they do? Little Caesars, what did you do? What's the new thing you did? I keep seeing your commercials when I try to watch Abbott Elementary. It tastes like horse shit mixed with petrified cheddar. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. Slices and sticks. So they've made it so that half the pizza is like a pizza and then the other half is like cheese sticks. It's very strange. Hi, Tentacat. How are you? How are you doing? Happy Thursday. Yay. Thank you for the head pats. Purr. I love Pagliacci. I can't eat it right now, but I love it. The problem with Pagliacci in my household is that Alex eats it and it's fine. Except when he orders it, he doesn't pay attention. And they default to like the biggest pizza. <laughs> so <laughs> every time he gets the pizza and I come out, I have to come out because they always call my phone for some reason. I come out and I'm like, that's a big pizza. And he looks at me and he's like, I forgot to change it again. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's our Pagliacci story, but it's good pizza. Also, you're headachey, but you're chilling. Okay, I hope you get to chill. Okay, so. One day. One day a while ago, I was in Hong Kong. I was in Hong Kong for uh, school. Uh, I went there for a trip. Um, I learned about how terrible a, uh, a six to six to two work day is. Um, <coughs> anyway, there was a place there that I loved in Hong Kong that had um, it was just it was just called Big Pizza, and it was like. An over 30 inch pizza. Like it was a big pizza. <laughs> and uh, me and my group mates had bought it once. And it was just a really big pizza. <laughs> and then we had to take it on the train home. <laughs> it, it's huge. It's huge. Hold on. Now I wonder about how big it actually was. How big was the big pizza in Hong Kong? Um... <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, wow, it's been open since 1993, or it was open since 1993. Um, how big is your pizza? Please tell me. Uh, Bara Pizza Coon. <laughs> um. Oh my God! You can't just call yourself Big Big Pizza. And not give me the inches. Come on. That sounds... This this whole conversation. I'm not going to worry about it. How big was the big pizza? Uh, okay, I'm a liar. It was a 24 inch pizza. I'm sorry. I said over 30. It felt like it was over 30. I'm sure I'm not the only one that lies about inches on the internet. Um... Anyway, I'm gonna go back to this. <laughs> so the reason we're here in the game. <laughs> if you have to ask, you can't handle it. <laughs> but yeah, really big pizza. Really good pizza, too. Only those who don't use the metric system. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, okay, so we all agreed that we're eating this, uh, this giraffe chicken pizza that she made, right? Like, I'll eat it. I guess. <clears throat> it's so ridiculous that I have to rub my eyes and stare in silence as she gingerly starts eating a slice. 
And I can do way more than that, too. I can fly, teleport from place to place, and... Oh, my absolute favorite ability is... She stuffs her mouth and her words grow incomprehensible. Well, I'll tell you later. But you believe me now, right? Even if you don't, I'm sure that enough people here probably do. <clears throat> so you're a god or some spiritual being or whatever. What's this place all about? I'm glad you asked, Devin. It's really quite simple. You're here to participate in my game. The game of fortune. She just bored six to eight giraffes right in front of them. <laughs> it's true. That is exactly what she did. A competition for you all to duke it out and earn my favor. Where the winner gets a wish granted by yours truly. A wish. That's right. You'll get an amazing wish. And I'm not going to monkey's paw you or do anything evil. I'll give it to you with every intention that you've got for it. I really am just the greatest, aren't I? <laughs> Complicated genie antics, indeed. You are. You certainly are the greatest, Miss Bell. Suck up. Oh, thank you, thank you. But just Bell is fine. Gotcha. Well, Bell, can we ask you questions? There are so many things I want to know about the digit games. All of them, not just yours, and... Oh, I also want to know about this realm, its properties, and... You're putting the cart before the horse now, aren't you, Willie? We haven't even spent a full five minutes here, and you're already asking me about my private life. Tell you what. You win the game, and I'll answer any and all questions you've got. Until then, everything is on a need-to-know basis, okay? <laughs> yeah, nerd. I guess that's fair. You've all got your rules and stuff to follow. I just don't- okay, so here's just what I don't understand. Maybe it's because it's the demo. And maybe it's because, like, we're not, um... You know, they're still working it out. Anytime William talks, he's on the screen. Sometimes when Philip talks, he's on the screen. I assume the grandpa is Philip. I don't remember anymore. But the rest of these fuckers, I ain't seen them in a minute. <laughs> so we'll be playing a game to get some wishes granted? That seems like a nice deal to me. What are the rules? There's certainly a lot of things I'd like to wish for if I had the chance. Like, Lilith shows up. And, uh... The girl with Lilith, whose name I don't remember, shows up. I don't- I don't think that's Jade. But no one else does. Or has. Wishes don't exist, idiot. And even if they did, I wouldn't trust someone acting like this with any of mine. Even after all I've shown you, you're still doubtful, huh? Well, I suppose a mix of skepti skepticism and belief is what makes life interesting. <laughs> Every time Lilith stands to attention, it sounds like a guillotine striking the base. <laughs> As for your question, Jade, I'll explain the rules quite simply. The game of Fortune is a battle royale where one winner will, remade, will emerge victorious and earn a wish of their choosing. They'll play for four rounds total, with each round having four teams of four people, each team having two pairs. And in these groups, you'll play a variety of games. Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on one second. My, uh... Okay, you're gonna see my green screen for a minute. <laughs> why am I... Why am I bugging out? Are you good? What are you taking in? What are you taking in? You are not taking in the right mic. There we go. <laughs> like, I was just shaking and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not, I'm speaking normally. It was taking in my, uh, my webcam mic as opposed to my, um, my microphone mic, which is right here. Oh man. And in these groups, you'll play a variety of games. After each round, exactly four players will be removed from the game. The final round will have exactly four participants fighting for victory. And the winner will, of course, be getting their wish granted. Uh, seems straightforward enough. Each round we'd go from 16 to 12 to 8 to 4 to 1. Four rounds of games. It's such a lovely number, isn't it? But you hit the nail on the head. 
<laughs> if you've got that much down, then the rest of this will be a breeze to understand. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> Take a look over at the four doors over there. Bell points to four large doors, each numbered one through four. Rule one. Four of you will enter one of these doors, starting with the first one, and will participate in a game. Exactly four people must enter. No more, and no less, or I won't activate the game. Rule 2. Once the game has started, no other doors can be entered unless the previous door's game has been completed. I feel like a lot of these rules are gonna be like, uh... Oh no, we hear someone screaming and we can't get them out, but the door won't open. Or... Oh no, this person's having a mental breakdown, but we have to drag them in, otherwise we won't be able to play the game. I'm picking up what it's putting down. I'm picking it up. Rule 3. Each game will be randomly selected from a category of four potential options where applicable. And those options are... 2 versus 2. A team game where one game of two will win and the other team of two will be disqualified. One ver oh, so we're doing Mario, Mario, uh, Mario Party rules. <laughs> 1 versus 3. A game of power dynamics where either one player wins or the opposing team of three players wins. The losing side is disqualified. Hi, Beetle. How are you? Happy Thursday Eve. We're getting wild in this game. We're getting uh, we're getting Mario Party in this demo. <laughs> uh, Four-player dilemma. A wild game with rules that can vary drastically. Sometimes it's cooperative, competitive. Or a mix of both. This game can have anywhere between four and zero winners, and zero to four players being disqualified. All for one. A competitive game where only one player may win. It's everyone for themselves. So, um... So if you're in a game, and it's like the last one, and... No, I'm sure she's done the math. I'm sure she's done the math on all this to make sure that she always has four people for games. I, I hope. May I ask a question? You may indeed. You said that these game categories are randomly selected where applicable. What does that mean exactly? Oh, it just means that depending on the results of the previous games, some options might not be viable anymore. I'm sure the logic behind that is clear, right? Crystal, please continue. I shall. There's only one more rule to go over. Of course, it, the game of four only has four rules. <laughs> rule four. Every game will have a fair chance for players to win. No matter how unfair or dire theme things may seem, there's always a chance for victory. This game gonna have buzz saws, y'all. I know it. I feel it in my heart. It's gonna have buzz saws, and it's gonna be a way to win. And it's gonna be like, I don't know, Kaiji cutting off your ear or some shit. This rule does not apply to the last room, however. That's it. The rules are pretty simple, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they make sense. Um. Oh, you're Laura. Okay. Laura raises a hand as she looks over to the doors. What does being disqualified mean? Do we sit out and wait for the winner? Or are we kicked back from where we came from? Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. When this is all done, you'll be bringing us back to... the real world, I guess? Of course! I can't have you staying here forever, after all. As much fun as it would be to keep you all here, it's not really in my best interest, and not really allowed, either. Oh, but to answer your first question, Laura, about what happens when you get disqualified, it's really a simple thing. You die! You are completely contradicting the guys outside that said we wouldn't die. Bell? <laughs> huh? Die? Hold on, hold on. I didn't agree to any type of geth- de geth? Death game here. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We didn't sign up for this. Hmm. But you kind of did. Coming into my realm meant that you accept that part and portion of my games. Scared of a little death. 
You're not gonna get far if you chicken out this early in the game. Buddy, you could die too. Chill out. <laughs> what? How are you so calm about this? Did you not hear what she said? Literally, when we were outside, we asked, Are we going to get hurt? And they were like, nah, you'll be fine. They lied. They were liars. They were liar, liar, plats for hires. There can be only one winner, which means the rest- Uh, there can be only one winner, which means the rest of us are gonna die. Yeah, I'm feeling it too, Skirp. <laughs> that doesn't freak you out? <laughs> nah, not really. What the hell is wrong with you? He's right, you're being completely ridiculous. I don't care if you're giving the king the keys to the gates of heaven. There's no way in hell that we're participating in anything like this. Oh, but you have no choice, dear Lilith. Everyone has to play. Yep, yep. This completely goes against the rules where, um... Well, it, it complements the rules. Where, um... You know, it's like, oh, well, everyone has to play, so you gotta drag them kicking and screaming. Uh, maybe only your spirits die in here and your body is okay, but no soul. That's what I was thinking, too. I think that's what I was thinking last week. Like, oh, they're saying, like, our bodies won't get hurt. They're being very specific about our bodies, so maybe, you know, all the soul shit. Because it's like, cut off your arm. Your body's good. Your soul still has to deal with the ramifications of that. Man, what a time. What a time. Oh, I was right. You're the old man. Lilith, maybe you should take a moment to breathe and calm down. Calm down? She's telling us that we're playing a game that could kill us. <laughs> Ouch, my soul alarm. And I've got no intentions of playing along. Let her talk, old man. She's gonna have to learn her lesson the hard way. I hope you die first. I'd prefer if she didn't. Fuck you. I can't believe you're all going along like, like this with this like it's normal. Really? You won't play a single game? Do you have shit stuck up your ears or do you just like playing coy? You're making a bad move, lady. I wouldn't keep egging her on like that if I were you. Oh, what is this dear old goddess going to do? Pump my ass to hell? She might. That's a fun idea, but why don't I try this instead? Belle winks before snapping her fingers. I'm expecting something to happen to Lilith, like she'll blow up, get engulfed in flames, or face some other kind of divine punishment. But instead, we all turn our heads when we hear a familiar voice cry out in pain. Ah, there it is, there it is. The way they get you to play this fucking game. They kidnap your people. <laughs> or... Bodily injure. Well, solely injure your friend's sister. <laughs> yeah, watch out, it's a snake! <laughs> ah! Laura's body is being constricted by a large snake, slowly curling and binding her until she's completely immobilized and lying helpless on the ground. Ah! Wah! Ah! I'm not good at screams of terror. Each of Laura's screams is short, slowly shortened as the snake continues to squeeze her, choking out breath after breath. <laughs> Holy shit! What the actual fuck are you doing? Let her go! Lilith runs over to the snake and tries va valiantly to wrestle the beast off of her sister as best as she can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can you fuck stop watching and help me out? R right. I swallow my fear and attempt to take a step forward, but Devin pulls on my arm and silently shakes her head. Smart. <laughs> She's got it in a chokehold! <laughs> it's it's not worth it, man. Somehow, her words sap out all the courage I have, and I feel myself freeze in place as everyone else continues to simply stare. Fuck! Fuck! It's gonna be okay, Laura. Don't worry, I'm gonna get you out of this. Laura continues to gasp for air as the snake constricts her, paying no heed to Lilith's attempt to pry it off. Oh well, yeah, she's like dying. <laughs> then Belle simply steps behind her and smugly p places a hand on Lilith's shoulder. If you want me to remove the snake, all you have to do is agree to play the game. You! Lilith turns around for just a moment, 
Meeting Belle's cocky smirk with a glare of pure fury. Fine, I'll play. Just get the snake off of her. Excellent. Belle snaps her fingers once more, and in a puff of smoke, the snake vanishes, leaving Laura clutching her chest and taking heavy breaths as her sister embraces her. Hey, hey, I'm here, Laura. It's gonna be okay. Just breathe. Just take deep and steady breaths. Shit, man, we haven't even started playing yet, and things are already hectic. Listen, buddy. You're killing me. <laughs> the snake reappears around Lilith. Yeah! It's gonna be one hell of a game. I look between Zeth and Lilith, and I want to punch the bastard right in the mouth for all the horrible things he's saying. Alright, so um, I'm gonna go into the game. I'm gonna take over uh, Clyde's body since he won't do it, and I'm gonna punch every single fucker in this. <laughs> no! I'm not gonna punch Lilith. <laughs> But with Devin anchoring me, I do nothing but ball my fist by my side. Wonderful. With that out of the way, I think we're all ready to participate. You all understand the rules, yes? No other questions that need to be answered before we begin? Everyone is silent, aside from Lilith, who's still comforting her sister. And with that confirmation, Belle nods and begins to float up. Well then, let's not waste any more time. Let this round of the Game of Fortune commence. She snaps her fingers once more and a blinding light fills the room. Before we get started, why don't you take notice of the little clover icon on the right? I've added a little profile tracker so you can learn about each of the players. Great! Perfect! Where? This one? Oh, and this is just for you. Not for Clyde or Devin or anyone else you know. Please, please don't say my name. Please don't take my computer stop and say my name. Please don't dead name me on this stream. It'll let you keep track of the small details as you play through the game, such as relationships and notes worthy of being, well, noted. The profiles are also accessible in the options setting. And after reaching an ending, why not check again and see if there are some special notes around. Anyway, good luck and good fortune through this deadly game. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Look, I know that they do it to be quirky and scary and like, oh, they know my name. I mean, actually, my name, my, my computer is named Wadsworth. <laughs> but like, it takes like your C drive. I don't even play on my C drive. Like, chill. I feel my head ache for a moment as the flash leaves me disoriented. But when I readjust, the room is the same as it was before. Ah. Same as it ever was, same as it ever was. Uh, the only difference is now that Belle is gone and the first door has opened up. Hold on, where is... Is it... Where? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't actually think I have the profiles yet. <laughs> Mine's skirperp. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. All right, now that we've got things started, who's going where? Huh? What, were you not paying attention? We gotta split up into four groups of four, you know. Four people for each room. Right, right. I was asking where people wanted to go. Any room preference or anything like that? Maria and I will be going into the last door. What? How are you gonna say that without asking me first? Well, do you have any better ideas? Hm. I mean, if you want to go th through the last door, then fine. We can go through the last door. If that's the case, I'd like to accompany them. Teresa, would you care to join me? That's fine by me. I'd like to get to know a little more about the competition, to be honest. Awesome! I'd like to get to know you two as well. Especially you, dude. What's your regime? You must work out a ton to get muscles like that. Haha. <laughs> Well, it's nothing special, really. I think they are casino workers, yeah. They start to chat idly as if there isn't a care in the world, like they aren't going to be playing for their lives. Also, we have ads in 1 minute and 40 seconds. Thank you so much for watching the ads. I really appreciate it. It means you guys don't have to watch Parable ads, and I get ad revenue, which is always nice. If you don't want to see any ads, please consider subscribing to me. You'll get access to my subscriber emotes. Otherwise... Thanks for hanging around. I really appreciate it. Okay, have fun, Per. Be safe getting home. 
Have good food. Have good uh, cuddles. See you. All right, so we've got room four taken care of. That leaves three more. As I listen to Zeph try and organize the groups, I feel Devin tug on my arm. Hey, Clyde? Her voice shakes me out of my stupor. What's up? I think that we should stick together, you know, as a pair. I don't know if anyone else is going to split up or anything. I just... She holds onto my arm tightly as she looks over at the others. I understand because, frankly, I feel the same way. I'm terrified, and the idea of playing games to survive sends a chill through my entire body. The only comfort I have right now is knowing that Devin is here with me too, and that she'll probably have my back if we get into any serious trouble. Where'd the- where'd the music go? Where'd the music go? Uh, it's gone, I guess. And in terms of serious trouble, this is about as bad as it gets. And yet, in the back of my mind, other thoughts float around, pulling for my attention as the seconds pass. What if we get into a game together and we have to kill each other? What if other people try to kill us? Are we going to have to protect one another? And most important of all, if there's only going to be one victor, are we doomed to be enemies from the start? Hey dude, don't just zone out like that. It's a little freaky seeing you go wide-eyed like a fish. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, I just got lost in thought. The flowchart has been unlocked. You can access it from the options menu or the main menu. Hmm. Honestly, I think I'm sticking together with Sans. We should stay together. We should watch over each other. It's me, boy. The fortune in your brain. Save the girl. <laughs> the tension that locked Devin's face washed away as she heard those words and let out a heavy sigh. Oh, ads are going, so I'm gonna do a little pause. I'm gonna drink some water. I'm gonna look at my Discord messages. I have so many. Why do I have so many? Like, you sent me one. And you sent me one. Oh, right, the, ho the house hippo, the house hippo. Let me watch the house hippo. It's nighttime in a kitchen just like yours. All is quiet. Or is it? Or is it? The North American house hippo is found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. House hippos are very timid creatures and are very I should have watched this on my phone, but it's okay. They defend their territory if provoked. They it's so small! For food, water, and materials for their nests. It's the so tiny! The house hippo are chips, raisins, and the crumbs from peanut butter on toast. Oh, I love it! Nests in bedroom closets, using lost mittens, dryer lint, and bits of string. The Aww. nests can be very soft and warm. House hippos sleep about 16 hours a day. Six you're a cat? It's really real. But you knew it couldn't be true, didn't you? That's why it's good to think about what you're watching on TV and ask questions. Oh my god, so it's it's use your critical thinking skills commercial. <laughs> oh, that was really cute though. Thank you. Thank you for the house hippo. And my ads are done. <laughs> I swear it's like Come back. Yeah, I agree. As long as we got each other, things are gonna be just fine. When they stopped airing that, we got those people that are like, if you if you like X and fiction, you support it IRL. True. The critical thinking skills these days have not been very good. No, you're fine, Skurb. You're fine. I didn't want to rush you, so I was like, ah, I'll come back when Skurb's ready. <laughs> God, it's so true though. Maybe we need these back. We need the house hippo commercials back. That's what I hoped. Even if I knew that it was just delaying the inevitable. Yo, lovebirds. You dumb whispering to one another that you want to join the conversation? 
We're not dating. Tweet tweet. Don't encourage him. Like I said, feel free to join in on the conversation at any time. So anyone got any room preferences or pairings or anything at all? Laura and I are going into the third room together. Lilith was still holding Laura in her arms. She wasn't crying or murmuring anymore, but she still seemed shocked by the whole snake incident. I'm not going to debate anyone on it either. We need time. Alright, so Laura and Lilith will go into the third room. <laughs> Sans X Discord bot, I guess. <laughs> if that's the case, William and I will enter the third room with them. Seriously? I don't want to have to deal with that loud mouth. I hope she punches the hell out of you. Well, if that's the case, you're free to go and be with whoever you want to. I'm not your mother. You're free to do whatever you want. I, I didn't say that I wouldn't go along with you. But couldn't you have picked any other people to group with? Of course, but I have my reasons. In her eyes, in her young old eyes, she's like, we could, we could take them out. We could kill them. We could go forward. I'm being strategic and logical. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, Zeph. Hmm? Me and Clyde don't want to be in a group with Jade. You wound me with your words. Are you saying you wouldn't like to participate in a death game with moi? That's Jade. Okay. Absolutely not. Ditto, dude. Oh, the woes of rejection. I'd still like to pair up with Jade, if that's alright. Do whatever you want. Just means you're not going with Clyde or me either. That's fine. I don't want to split from Kishi either. So that means Philip and Richard, you two are going to be with another as a pair too. That's completely fine with me. Seconded. All that's left then is to decide what doors we'll be going through. Kishi, what are you feeling? Door number one or door number two? Door one. Any reason why you wanted that door? It's the one that's open right now, which means if I survive the game, then I'll be one of the first to finish the round. Is that important? I don't think so, but I do like being first. You could say that I'm a little bit competitive. I'd like the second door. Having to do the first door with all that pressure on me to perform well, that's scary. You don't have any need to worry. It's not like people will know how you did until after they finish their own games. Well, if I die, it'll be super obvious when people move on to the next round. <laughs> Richard, I love you. <laughs> At least if I'm second, I won't be like the first death people talk about. That's a terribly pessimistic way to go about this. Do you really think you're gonna die no matter what? Well, you got your choices then. You can go with me and Kishi or Richard and Philip. Devin, you don't care between these, do you? Nah, I think they're both pretty cool. Um, oh, okay. Well, good. I kind of didn't want to go with Richard and Philip anyway. Uh, either two or three. Oh, sorry. Uh, per game, either two or three or zero to three. <laughs> I, I thought about this when she was talking about the rules. I was like, how do you, how do you do it? How do you get it? Like, if three people die, how do you level set that? But I'm sure she has her reasons. I'm sure she could figure it out. She seems to like the number four. I'm sure she could do math. I'm sure she could count. <laughs> I can only count to four. Ah, she can count to four. I'm sure of it. Uh, Alright, we're going with Zeph and Kishi. Let's go with Zeph and Kishi. Flattered by the choice. Well, can you blame them? We are pretty damn awesome. No, Zeph, it's because I want to take you out. Like, I'm okay if Kishi lives, but I need to take you out, buddy. Which means that Jade, Grant, you're with us. I'm glad you'll have us. Hopefully we don't rub off on you as poorly as we did with Clyde and Devin. You know, I don't think they dislike me as much as you think they do. 
It was a joint effort on a bad first impression, Grant. Don't try and pin this all on me. No, it was all you, buddy. I think I'm starting to see why you might be seen as irksome. See, now it's spreading to others. Don't blame this on me. But the groups decided, Zeph and Kishi walk over to the first door and wave for Devin and I to follow. Oh, you two. No point in waiting around. Let's get right to it. My stomach was curling into knots. I wanted to wait as long as possible. I didn't want to see what lied beyond these doors. My feet felt like cement. It was hard to even take a single step forward, knowing that my death might be just a few minutes away. My heart was beating like mad, and I could feel a trickle of sweat starting to roll down the side of my face. This... this could be it. This could be the end of my life. I... I can't. My thoughts were paused, and I felt a push on my back. <laughs> Behind each door is one copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee. I turned to see Devin smiling at me with a look of pity and understanding. Fear and uncertainty lingered in her eyes as I imagined it did in mine. Don't stare at me like that, you dope. People are gonna get ideas otherwise. Now come on, we can make it through this if we try. Yeah, I know. If we try. We didn't know what the future had in store for us, but we could try and mend its design as best as we could. That's all we could do after all. We walked through the door with Zeph and Kishi, and once we all stepped through the door, once we all stepped through, the door closed behind us. Good luck, good fortune. The room itself- Hey Skurb, remember when you said behind each door is one copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee? There's a TV here! That might be viable. <laughs> the room itself was rather small, and all it had were four chairs in front of a television screen. The t there were two exits in the back of the room. It was unnerving, but everything up to this point had been. It really does look like a dentist's office! <laughs> hey, why is there a television here? Is there something wrong with the television? Well, didn't those digits of Eden people say that electronic devices wouldn't work in a place like this? They did say that, didn't they? Devin pulled out her phone and frowned as it seemed unresponsive. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have an appointment. Time to leave. <laughs> dead. And I know I had plenty of battery life before we jumped through the magic door. I sure hope my warranty didn't expire. Well, maybe it's not an actual television, or maybe Belle has her own rules about this place that lets her decide what electronics are allowed to work and which ones aren't. Magic runs on batteries. <laughs> She's eating a lot of batteries to do all those giraffe tricks. You guys better be happy about it. No point in splitting hairs over simple stuff like this. As if on cue, the television flashed a few times, emitting static before a clear picture of Bella on the screen waved a hand towards us. <laughs> the magnets and batteries, yup. That's what fuels magic. That's precisely it, Seth. This isn't really a television. Not in a technical sense, anyway. But if it looks like a television and acts like a television, it might as well be one, right? I figured that using something a little more technical might make things go smoother. Gotta keep up with the times, after all. Zeph smiled and turned to face Devin. See? what I tell ya? I guess this place's weird funky rules just let anything happen. Anything can happen, you're correct. So let's get right to it and set your game up. So, how exactly is this game going to work? Simple. First we decide what kind of game we're going to play. You remember them, right? Two versus two, one versus three, four player dilemma, and all four won. After the game type is selected, I'll randomize the teams if there are any. Then finally, I'll tell you the team you'll I'll tell you the game you'll be playing, the rules, and then you'll start. Nothing special, right? Everything's going to be through everyone's going to be going through it, so make sure you memorize this, as best as you can anyway. She giggles before recomposing herself. Alright, first things first. What type of game shall we play? This is when I expect the game to cut into some kind of bejeweled knockoff. Yeah, though! The television screen started to shift between four screens, each showing one of the types of games. My eyes were glued as the screen... Oh, excuse me. 
flickered from one image to the next. I was trying to stay optimistic. After all, there were a lot of chances that Devon and I could be paired together, or that we'd be able to at least survive together. I was running each option in my head, hoping that fate or something would look favorably upon me here. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> my hopes were answered when the screen stopped, showing one person playing against three others. It looks like we'll be playing a one versus three game. Let's see who's on what team. I'm worried. <laughs> we all looked nervously at one another. No matter what kind team orientation there was, one team was going to be split. I hope it's Skateboard Guy 2. I hope we take him out. Um, this, uh, they need beta edits on this. I just didn't want it to be me. Please don't be me. Please. Oh my god. Clyde versus Devin, Zeph, and Kishi. Oh. Okay, so completely off the realm of everything else. Uh, I don't know if you were here for this during, um... During my Steam Next Fest demo sensation. Uh, Beetle was there and Alex was there. But, uh, there was a game that we played called King of the Castle. And it was, um... How do I explain? It has nothing to do with this. It's just a different game. Uh, it's like a it's like a good Twitch game. Anyway, it just came out today, so I'm probably gonna buy it. Yeah, I'll probably buy it, and we can try it like next week or something. Yeah, the end. My heart sank. Time slowed. I wanted to blink my eyes and rub my ears and hope that I just perceived everything wrong. This couldn't be happening. This just couldn't be happening. No. No. I have now revealed the exits for this room. Take note of the door on the left and the right. Clyde, would you please enter the door on the left? Kishi, Zeph, and Devin, please enter the room on the right. No, Belle, you've got this wrong. You can't... You can't split us up like this. Oh, then why not? You... You... Are you afraid that things won't be fair because it's three versus one? Don't worry, Clyde. I assure you that things are properly balanced. I don't care about that. I don't... I don't... I gripped my teeth as I stared at the screen. I don't want to kill Devin. Well, Clyde, that's your choice. If you don't want to kill Devin, you don't have to. All you have to do in return is die. That's how these games go. You either live or you die. And if you want to ensure Devin's life, all you have to do is die and let the other team kill you during the game. Alright, so, um, do we want to save Sans? I mean, I played the genocide route, so, um, I could go either way on this. Simple enough, isn't it? No. No, there has to be some other way. The sooner you come to accept the rules of this place, the sooner you'll be able to make the best choices. If you wallow around, you'll just die, and die, and die. Actually, I'll only die once, Kishi, and that's what I'm worried about. The first death. Come on, Zeph, let's go. Kill Kyrie knockoff, please. <laughs> right behind you. Zeph and Kishi left to the right door, not bothering to spare me any other words. Are we... Are we really gonna die like this? I... I don't know. Devin reached out to put a hand on my shoulder, but reeled it back once she realized how hollow the comfort would end up being. Do your best, okay? She sucks in a breath of air and, with heavy steps, walks through the door, leaving me alone to contemplate my next move. And so I really had any choice in the matter. Did I really have no choice but to pick between my own life and that of Devin's? Clyde, if you don't hurry up and move to your room, I'm going to assume that you're forfeiting the game and I'll have you disqualified. What if Devin just killed Zeph? <laughs> if only. Dread and fear were the only things keeping my legs moving as I entered through the door on the left. Once I entered, the door closed behind me. The room itself was rather small and simple, just a chair in front of another television screen. So I remember when I was like, ha ha ha, it's like Mario Party. What if it really is like Mario Party, but like, you know, realistic? Because that shit is scary as hell. 
No observable exits aside from the door that I just came out of. Yeah, tug of war to the death! Was this where the game was going to be played? Soon, the screen filtered to life and Belle's face was on it once again. Alright everyone, the game that we'll be playing today is called... Pick Your Poison! I hate this already. The rules are simple. Each side will take turns picking a punishment that the other side will have to experience. You will be provided with two options each time. To make things fair, however, the team of three will only be able to enact weaker punishments against Clyde. This balances out the teams and ensure that each side could potentially win. Only one person on the team of three is able to receive punishment at a time. The person who sits in the chair will be designated as the person who will receive the punishment. Your teammates can choose to swap out with you before the punishment is delivered, but not before knowing what the punishment is. Lastly, you may not swap out of the chair unless one of your teammates chooses to do so. You'll have to work together if you want to d uh, distribute the pain easily. The game will end when one side has no more living players. Y'all. <laughs> Sit down in the chair when you're ready to play for the team of three. Feel free to discuss amongst yourselves who will sit up front first. I did as I was told, sitting down in the chair and watching as Belle stared directly at me from the screen for a few minutes, before she nodded her head, seemingly pleased by whatever was going on in the other room. <laughs> Take a seat, Belle. Alright, seems that you're all set to get this game started. Y'all made Devin go first! As she spoke, metal locks on the chairs activated, keeping my legs and torso in place to the chair. The screen changed to show what I assumed was a live feed of the other room, with Devin sitting in a chair, with Zeph and Kishi sitting in chairs just behind her. She looked pained. Understandably so, considering the circumstances. But why... why was she the one sitting before me now? If the game is to kill your opponents, doesn't that mean they should put someone who is willing to kill me? Devin wouldn't want to put me in harm's way if she could help it. Zeph and Kishi should be up front, switching amongst themselves if they thought that anything was too risky. Or maybe they think that I won't hurt Devin because she'd be the one who'd be hurt by whatever punishment I picked. Maybe they forced her in the chair and then took seats behind her. If they thought that I'd go easy on her, they might just wait until either she's dead or I'm dead. So many options and I don't like any of them. But Belle didn't give me any more time to think. Round one, start! The upper right part of the screen showed two images, a lightning bolt and a syringe of some kind. Press the left button to send a strong electrical shock. Press the right button to inject your opponent with a painful but non-lethal poison. Those were the options that I had. I looked down on my hands and see that each, on each arm of the chairs, there was a button. That's probably where I pressed whatever option I wanted. As I was thinking it over, Devin looked up at me through the screen. Hey Clyde, which would you prefer? A small cut, a small cut on your leg or a gunshot through the leg? Huh? Those are the options I was given. You said you could either get shot through the leg or you could receive a small cut. I figured that you wouldn't want to be shot through the leg, but you know. It never hurts to be polite. <laughs> yeah, let me think about it! Is she being honest? She's telling me what her options are? Is this a kind of trick or... Clyde? Hello? Is this thing not one way? Ah, uh, no. No, it is. I can hear you. Uh, just pick the small cut, please. Sure thing. If it were me, I would have chosen to shoot you through the leg, you know. Yeah, well, nobody asked you. Just saying, I think it would be badass. Devin rolls her eyes and then looks back at me. So what are you going to pick for me? I... I haven't picked yet, but... There's an option for a strong electrical shock and one for a painful but non-fatal poison injection. Sheesh! Those both sound terrible. I guess that's what you get for being without teammates. I'd prefer to take the poison, I guess. I don't know what constituted a strong electric shock, but I'm sure that I won't die if I take a non-fatal poison. Okay then, I'll pick that one. Um, yeah, it could be non-fatal, but it could make you want to die. I pressed the right button, and soon the green fla screen flashed with a green check mark. Round one is over. Punishments have been selected. The solo shall receive a shallow cut on their leg. A trio member will receive a painful but non-lethal injection. Ugh, I hate needles. 
Well, you did ask for it. I guess you're right. Don't worry, I don't think you'll have to deal with that. What? A rotation has occurred. Zeph will take the place of Devon for the punishment. Oh, okay. The chairs rotated, and now Zeph was in front and looking at me with a cocky grin on his face. Happy to see me? Why did you trade places with Devon? Don't worry your pretty little head about that, and just deal with your little leg cut. As he spoke, a compartment of my own char opened up with a mechanical knife slicing through my pants, leaving a shadow cut on my thigh. Ouch! Jeez, that fucking hurt. Blah. You think you got that bad? Your dumb poison feels like there's acid going through my veins. Holy moly. <laughs> oh my god, my char. <laughs> Zeph grimaced in pain as he clutched the arm of the chair. I didn't think that whatever poison going through him would really be that bad. Buddy, it says non-fatal, but it doesn't say it won't hurt. But I suppose it could have been worse. I was still looking down at my shallow wound before a new set of options were put before me. Round two, start. <laughs> Press the left button to ignite your opponent's leg for two seconds. Or press the right button to pour a liter of acid over your opponent's arm. Okay, well, he's a skateboarder. Like, if he doesn't have access to his leg, that's kind of bad. But if he loses an arm, he can still skateboard. And done. I'm guessing you don't want to talk about our options, do you? Look, man, someone's got to die. And I'm really not that keen on dying this early if I can help it. Also, I've got, like, burning blood right now, so I'm not feeling chatty right now. Well, if that's how you're gonna be... Uh, I don't know. It, it would make sense. He was right in a sense, we were fighting for our lives. Lighting his leg on fire for two seconds seemed way too merciful for him. So I chose the acid pouring punishment. Round two is over. Punishments have been selected. A, the solo will receive a painful blow to the chest. A trio member will have their arm doused in a liter of acid. <laughs> Acid, dude? Really? Yo, it was either acid or flames. Don't complain. You just talked about how we were going to die a few seconds ago. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you just pour acid on people. Before he could protest any further, a ceiling opens up and a noxious bubbling acid descends onto his right arm. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. Death cried out in pain as the liquid continued to rain down his arm. Only once it stopped, he raised his head up and weakly grinned towards the camera. Ha! Ah. Ha ha! Damn, this shit hurts like a motherfucker. Still stings, too. Like, this acid shit is clinging to my clothes. You're a real sadist, you know that? Oops. I wanted to snap at him. But before I could, a steel mallet slammed into my chest, knocking any air I had left and sending a wave of pain across my body. The pain was intense, and I could tell that something was wrong. What's wrong? Got that shit knocked out of you? Got the wind knocked out of you? That shit looked like it hurt. I glared back at my screen. My chest was throbbing. I had never felt pain and anger in this magnitude before. Um, maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a go-go gadget chair. So like, the mallet just like sprung up from the chair. <laughs> Did Bell Fastball special that shit personally? <laughs> Good question. I wasn't sure if I had broke rib or if this was just a nasty bruise. I just knew that each time I inhaled and exhaled, the pain in my chest would flare up. <laughs> well, either way, it's looking like we're both worse for wear. Which, if you ask me, is better for us than it is for you. Let's see if you can survive the next round. I weakly growled at him as I was presented with the next set of punishments appearing on my screen. Press the left button to stab your opponent in the side. Press the right button to launch a brick at their head! The intensity of these options were increasing with each round. I suppose that's to ensure that someone dies sooner or later. But I was tired of looking at this cocky bastard and instantly locked in my answer. I figured a stab to the side would kill him sooner rather than later. He might stay awake after taking a brick to the head. Okay, but they're gonna switch. What? Nothing to say? Don't want to talk about what cool options of pain you might have? 
All right, guess we're just gonna go right to the punishment then. Also, we have ads in one minute. Thank you so much for watching the ads. Watching the ads means I get ad revenue. It means you guys don't have to watch pre-roll ads. If you don't want to see any ads, please consider subscribing to me on Twitch. You'll get access to my subscriber emotes. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out. He locked in his answer, wincing as the residual, residual pain continued to linger in his body. Round three is over. Punishments have been selected. The solo shall be constricted for two minutes. The trio member will be stabbed in the side. Finally getting serious, huh? Can't blame you for that. For the record, the other option I had was to cover you in venomous snakes. But I wasn't sure if they'd actually bite. Plus, we already saw a snake. This seemed way more interesting. No! <laughs> a rotation has occurred. Devin will take the place of Zeph for this punishment. <laughs> what? What the hell was going on? Hm. Didn't think that she'd swap this soon. Well, have fun stabbing your friend there. Zeph rotated out and Devin took his place. Before I had time to even curse at him, Devin cried out in pain as a knife wedged itself into her side. She started to sweat as she leaned forward and reached for the knife that was plunged into her flesh. Stop! Don't pull the knife out! What? Yeah, she really is just smiling, having a good old time. There's a goddamn knife in my side, and you're telling me not to pull the damn thing out? It fucking hurts! It's the only thing keeping you alive right now. You pull that knife out of your body and you'll bleed out fast. Why the fuck do you care? Because you're useful. I'm sure that Clyde wouldn't want to stab his dear friend again, would he? Just bear through the pain. It'll be over soon, anyway. I soon felt something wrap around my abdomen and start to constrict and squeeze me. Ah, okay. I gotta wait for the ads to finish. <laughs> yeah, leave it in. <laughs> Let's see. You don't see any ad. Wow. Nice. That means you are chosen. You are chosen specifically by Twitch to be loved. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I think... Hmm... I think I need... Another... Reference for this. Okay! My ads say that they're done. So let's continue. My ribs feared out in pain again and coughed out a, a pain. But my muscles continued to ache and try, and it only became tighter and tighter. I thought that I was going to be squeezed in half. It was hard enough to breathe already, but now it felt like no matter what, I couldn't suck any air into my lungs. See? Told you it'd be over soon. I gripped my teeth and forced myself to draw in one last breath. Defiance and anger were the only things keeping me alive. But even defiance and rage couldn't fight much against the burning pain in my chest. Every time I let out a small huff, I felt my chest get squeezed tighter. I just had to hold out for two minutes. I had already lost track of time and was just staring at Devin, hoping to focus my mind of anything other than the diminishing amount of air in my lungs. But it felt eternal. Every second just intensified the pain, and slowly breath began to leak out of my mouth. Soon I felt my lungs empty, and they pounded against the restraints, demanding more air. Even my helpless gasps were empty. 
I could only fill my, air, my mouth with air and couldn't get it down my throat. My vision began to get blurry, and a throbbing headache began to bound against my skull. My arms pulled up and pressed against the constraints. My legs flailed. Every part of my body ached. It demanded air, and was fighting with every bit of energy and strength it could to find some way to get it in. But with each desperate attempt, my body became weaker and weaker. I could only think of one thing and one thing only. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe, damn it! I finally felt a rush of air pull down into my lungs as the constraints loosened and unwrapped themselves. I collapsed in my seat. I wasn't sure how much more of this I could take. I coughed and hacked before choking in more air into my lungs. Even after all that, my head ached still and I couldn't focus. Well, yeah, you almost died. It almost seemed hopeless. Even if I were to somehow play things right, there's no way I'd be able to survive two more punishments like that again. Wow, he's still alive. I'll give him some credit, he's quite the fighter. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, though. Why... why did you take his place? You're really asking that now? Because Zeph was making you suffer, obviously. Shit. He was obviously just picking the worst options. Is it wrong to want my friend to not have another hammer slam into their chest? It was... out of mercy? Or compassion? Call it what you want. Just know that I hate seeing you in pain. Thanks. I needed that more than anything right now. Compassion and mercy. But I didn't know if that would be enough to carry me through this horrific game. Hey Clyde, I got some good news for you. I weakly look up, barely able to hold a breath, hoping that Devin actually had some good news. Your choices for punishment are... Having your head submerged in water for two minutes... That would kill me, no doubt. I wouldn't be able to hold a breath long enough to be able to last more than 30 seconds, I bet. Or, get tickled with an armpit in your- uh, with an armpit in your feather. With a feather in your armpit for a minute. Are you joking? I've got a knife in my side, Clyde. Do you really think I'd be joking about whether I could kill you or just make you giggle? I already picked my answer, so just tell me what you're gonna pick. I looked over at my options. Press the left button to burn your opponent's legs. Or press the right button to submerge your opponent's head in water for two minutes. You can either have your legs burned or your head submerged in water for two minutes. Shit, both of those sound terrible. Which one do you want? I'll probably freak the hell out if my legs suddenly go on fire. I'll take my chances of holding my breath. I think I know a few techniques. She knows how to hold her breath for more than two minutes. An icon. She started taking a few deep breaths as if preparing herself for going underwater. Yeah, I bet she do. But I was looking past her towards Kishi and Zeph. How would I know if they wouldn't try and take Devin's place right this instant? Kishi hasn't suffered at all during this game. She could easily just swoop in and try to take whatever mercy I would try and give to Devin. And if she did that, she'd also be able to pick the next punishment for me. And I know for a fact that she wouldn't go easy on me. Hell, she'd probably kill me with her first choice. So logically speaking, I should go for whatever I think could kill Kishi then, right? I don't know if she can hold her breath for two minutes. Or even if burning her legs would put her out of commission, but... It's my best shot, isn't it? Even so, even so... I lifted my head up to look at Devin, still trying to keep a brave face despite the pain she was in. If I get that wrong, then Devin's going to be in more agony than she's already in. And she doesn't deserve that, not after putting her life on the line just to give me some respite. Uh, all right, hold on, let me save. What y'all think? Burn or submerge? I mean, I think Devin wants me to submerge my opponent's head in water. Right? Even if these bitches switch, I don't think, I don't think they could do that. I mean, she's gonna have to die, though, anyway, for you to win, right? Yeah, exactly. I feel like if she's going to die, I would at least want her to die making the choice that she's made. I've been AFK and I tune in and it's burn or submerge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, I'm going to submerge. Yeah, I mean, but is submerging my opponent's head in water really the easiest punishment? Can she survive for two minutes underwater? Hmm. It's a long time, right? Alright, hold on, hold on. I know what to do here. I know what to do here. Uh. No. <laughs> All right. I've made a poll. <laughs> All three have to die for you to win. Yeah. Yeah, but it'll probably kill someone. Exactly. That's my thing, too. Oh, Twitch? Why'd you do that? Um, let's see. While I wait for that to finish out, um... Uh, there we go. Alright, is it still going? It's almost done. Um, did y'all all vote? The pedal to the metal. The pedal to the metal? No, not that, but um, it's going. It's going. I have to sneeze. I sneezed. But you didn't hear it because I muted myself. Alright, it looks like unless someone else votes, we're going with um Submerge Head. The poll is like if the group in game is voting. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> All right, we're submerging the head. Honestly, I'm worried that Kishi or Zeph are going to take Devin's place. But if I think about their perspective, they should want to win without putting themselves in any sort of danger. <laughs> Real life imitates art indeed. Even if they think Devin is going to go easy on me, inevitably I'll be getting chipped down further and further. That, or maybe they're betting that Devin will turn on me out of anger if I mess up. For now, the best place is the best place to simply assure Devin that she's got my trust and not do anything drastic. I press the right button and wait for the results on the screen to change. Round four is over. Punishments have been selected. The solo shall be tickled under the arms with the feathers for a minute. The trio members will have their heads submerged in water for two minutes. All three of them? Oh, uh, I don't know. Might just be one. You sure you're gonna be able to hold your breath for two minutes while you've got a knife in you? I've watched videos on how to do this. All I have to do is not panic. You know what I'd do if my legs are burned? Panic? I'd probably scream and shout and, you know, just be in a ton of pain. Alright, just don't panic, okay? She nodded to reassure me, but looked slightly surprised when a plastic square tank closed around her head and quickly was pumped full of water. She only had a moment to suck in a huge breath before the tank filled completely with water. She closed her eyes and simply sat there motionless, almost as if she was taking a nap underwater. I could only nervously stare. She looked fine, but I know she didn't feel fine. She had amazing willpower, but would that be enough? 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. She just continued to sit there, not a care in the world. 
Not even a hint of distress or pain was plastered on her face. 50, 60, 70. Her eyebrows winced and winced, and her lip twitched ever so slightly. Her body must have been begging for her to take a breath. It really did. It made it sound like all three were going to have to do it. She was at a minute and 30 seconds. She only had to hold for a little longer. But even a second must have felt like an eternity while her lungs were begging for new air. I didn't want to speak and distract her. I just leaned forward and hoped that she'd be able to hustle through it. With 20 seconds left, I saw a stream of bubbles slowly start to exit from her nose and her lungs def deflate ever so slightly. But her puffed up cheeks deflated and she inhaled whatever stockpiled air was in there just to get her through the last few seconds. I let out a sigh of relief. She'd still have a few more seconds left to go through, but I was sure that she could survive this without inhaling a drop of water. My optimism was spot on as the timer ticked down, the drain, the tank drained all the water out onto the ground, and Devin gasped for new air. After a few heavy breaths, she flashed a smile at me and winked. Yeah, good job! See? Told you I could do it. Yeah, well, you looked like you were struggling towards the end there. Struggle, please. I could go for three minutes if I didn't have this stupid knife stuck in me. Which, by the way, still hurts like hell. I'm sure that it does. Now it's your turn. I had almost forgotten about my punishment, but in hindsight, it wasn't anything to think about. The only real pain I had was when both of my arms were lifted and my chest reminded me that I probably had some kind of rib injury. The feathers that tickled under my arms didn't even make me laugh. It just felt weird. You look ridiculous right now. I want you to know that. Hey, you look like an idiot who tried to taste lava. What'd you say, asshole? Seth, there's no point in getting riled up. How am I not supposed to get angry at that? Well, you did start it. Even so. My arms were lowered and a new set of options were chosen for me. My eyes widened with horror. Press the left button to shoot your opponent through the head. Or press the right button to shoot your opponent through the heart. What the hell choices were these? Both of these were lethal. lethal. There's no way that Devin would survive this sort of thing. I tried to hide my fear. I couldn't let her know that I was basically forced to execute her. But Devin, being ever watchful and knowing me for a while, could tell something was up. Dude, you look constipated. Sh shut up! It's just my chest. It's really hurting, that's all. I've got a knife in my side and I don't look like I'm going to explode, do I? Shut through the heart, but you're too late. You give love a bad name. Oh, I hope I don't have to choose. I hope Clyde chooses. <laughs> Hell, you just held your breath for two minutes underwater. I think that shows how awesome you are. Oh, you think so? Maybe I could ask Belle for a reward after all this. You can get a bronze medal. Only bronze? Oh, can one of you please die so I don't have to hear any more of this? Kishi and I don't force people to listen to our conversations when they don't have to. Nobody asks for your input. Just hurry up and get on with it. Devin sighed and looked down at her options. It can make your chair hot, but not like burning. I guess it'd be like sitting on a metal chair that's been out in the sun all day. Uncomfortable, but manageable. I take it you'd rather not have a boulder roll over your leg. It's a new experience, Devin. But maybe I think that it'll be interesting. Besides, it might be a boulder made of ice cream. Wow. Never thought that your sense of humor would come out when your life was on the line. It's probably some mix of panic and survival instinct that's keeping me from freaking out. Maybe we should put you into more dangerous situations like this when you're at work. You'd be a hit in the kitchen. I could hear Zeph groaning in the back. Perfect. Just need to egg him into action. As for you, I can either pelt you with 50 snowballs or pour lava over your arm. You know, I was hoping you'd pick the snowballs right away. Uh, I've always wanted to taste lava. It looks like it would be a miracle drink. It probably tastes like dirt and pain. Really hot dirt that burns like hell. But think about it. Oh my god, can I just get out of my chair and kill them both? This is agonizing. Seth, calm down. But just... Listen to them! They're thinking about eating lava! Lava, Kishi! If they want to do that, then that's up to them. 
Oh, I'll be sure to share some with you if you want, Zeph. Oh, you're gonna share? Then never mind, I'm picking the snowballs. <laughs> Spicy cocoa. Yeah! But, but what if they're pull pure ice balls? Then they're really gonna hurt. Well, maybe it'll numb you on impact if they're really cold. Hey, Zeph. If lava's not up to your taste, how about a snow cone? I will shove a snow cone so far up your ass that you'll choke on it. I think that happened in a cartoon I watched once. All the snow melted, he drank it, and then the guy had to- Don't care, just pick your stupid choice already. That should do it at least. I sure hope it does. I pressed the left button and anxiously watched the screen. Round five is over. Punishments have been selected. The solo shall have to sit in an extremely hot seat. The trio member will have to be shot through the head. What? Before I could answer, someone else shouted first. What the fuck? Heh. <laughs> Seems that my strategy worked. Not that I really had much of a choice. Either Devin was going to get shot or someone else was. I had to play the hand I was dealt. You lying sack of shit! You didn't say those were your options! I thought you were gonna pick some stupid snowball option! Well, I figured, Zeph, that you'd want something else since you weren't keen on lava or snowballs. You little prick. A rotation has occurred. Zeph will take the place of Devin for the punishment. The chairs rotated along with Zeph ending up right in front of the screen. <laughs> but you feel real cocky right now, don't you? Like you've won or some shit just because you managed to kill me. Look, man, I don't want to kill anyone. But I sure as hell couldn't shoot my best friend. Watch your profanity. <laughs> Oh, is that the case? You're kind of a jerk, but if I could avoid it, I'd rather not kill you. It really was good timing. I can respect that, but man, if that's all you're worried about, then you're dumber than you look. What's that supposed to mean? Eh, you'll figure it out at the end. Or maybe someone's already told you. My time's up this round. See you around, I guess. Hope. Oh. A gun dropped down from the ceiling and aimed at Zeph's head. He didn't seem too disturbed in the least, and once the gun fired, his body slumped backwards, leaving nothing but a corpse. I felt sick. I had seen some horrific injuries already, but I'd never seen a dead body right before my eyes. I wanted to turn away and believe this was a bad dream, that I'd wake up from it at any moment. Of course, there wasn't going to be any such miracle for me. This game had to go on, and with Zeph's body being moved away, Kishi was the next one I had to face. That was pretty smart of you, Clyde. Lying to cover your lack of options. Yeah, she's still smiling. He's pretty smart, you know. You can give him some serious credit. He is? I'd never be able to think that quick on my feet. I mean, I can when I'm singing, dancing, and playing the drums, but... Well, the point is that I can respect you doing the best thing that you can in this situation. You aren't mad that I killed your boyfriend? Ah, well, it was inevitable. If I got mad about it, then I really shouldn't be here. I'd be more mad if you made him needlessly suffer for a long while. Which, you did in a way, I suppose. I didn't make anyone needlessly suffer. I didn't have any lethal options. True, true. Assuming that all of your options were as you said they were. Anyway, let's not drag this on much longer. I think that we'll finish this game in three minutes or less. Why are you so sure of that? Simple. Because one of my options is that I'll inject you with a poison that will kill you in three minutes. My heart skipped a beat. You don't really have that, do you? Why would I lie about something like that? Besides, if you die, then we win no matter how long it takes as long as one of us is alive. And I'm willing to bet that you're not going to kill Devin, even if you were able to kill me. So I'd rather just guarantee our victory, since you're very keen on playing games with her after all. She's bluffing. She has to be bluffing. But why? Why would she say something like that? She must know that I'll try and kill her no matter what. So is there any point in her making me lie? Is there some kind of punishment that's based on whatever it is that I pick? No, I'm just overthinking things. I've got to play to win. Yeah! Yeah, though! Literally just played the card. I looked down at my options and felt a bit of relief. Press the left button to pierce your opponent's chest with a sword. 
or press the right button to shower them in fireworks. I didn't want to play around and just drop fireworks on people. At times like these, it was best to just go and do the straightforward solution. I pressed the left button and anxiously watched as Kishi looked back at me. You know, you've got real pretty eyes. What the hell are you saying at a time like this? Just teasing. Don't tell Zeph I said that, by the way. He'll throw a fit. Or maybe a punch your way. I wouldn't want you to end up with a black eye after all. <laughs> Round six is over. Punishment has been selected. The solo shall be injected with a poison that will kill them in two minutes. She lied. <laughs> the trio member will be pierced through the heart with a sword. So you weren't lying? Well, I sort of lied. I figured that thinking you had an extra minute would be nice, wouldn't it? The difference between three minutes and two minutes isn't all that much. You can see all sorts of stuff in that amount of time if you're quick. But I'll leave that to you. After all, it seems I'm about to go through something painful. Does the last choice have a time limit now? I don't know. She took a deep breath and relaxed herself. Seconds later, a sword plunged through her chest. Her eyes shot wide open with pain, but she didn't yell. If anything, she appeared to try and contain whatever guttural cry instinctually was trying to escape her mouth. It was hard for me to take my eyes off of her. This would be the second person I killed. Was I turning into some kind of monster? No. No, I didn't have a choice. I had to. She was going to kill me after all. I felt a pinch in my shoulder and looked to see an empty needle retreating back into my chair. Shit! Kishi looked as though she had something cocky to say, or maybe she was trying to be reassuring. It's hard to tell when half of her face looked like she was trying to cling on to life, while the other half had accepted it. But after a few seconds, she slumped over, leaving only one person left on her team. Clyde, fuck man, how do you feel? Do you feel sick? I... I don't know. I think I feel fine? My vision started to get a little blurry, and I felt my body starting to get warm. Oh, thanks for patting Tiger. Scratch that, starting to feel a little dizzy. Shit. It's just the two of us now. Shut up, I know that. I know that, I just... Fuck, is there something we can do in less than a minute? Belle said that she'd give us each a fair shot at winning a game. I don't think she'd lie about that. What's the point in these games if everyone's going to die? Maybe some of the others can help. If this game ends, we can get help. There has to be some way. There has to be some kind of way that we both get out of this. Devin, please, we have to make a decision. I don't have a lot of time left. Don't say that! Come on, man! I can handle a knife in me for minutes on end and you can power through this poison! Mind over matter! I know that you can! Don't give up so easily! Get real, Devin! We're stuck in this room, bound to these chairs until the game is over. I'm... I'm getting worse. My heart's starting to beat like mad. I'm shivering! And my head... My head is pounding. I can barely keep focus. Even your wound. You got a wound that'll get infected if you don't get treatment. <laughs> Just walk off that cyanide, it's fine. It'd be a miracle if one of us got out of here alive, let alone both of us. So all we can do is hope that Belle keeps good on her word. Shut up, you're always going through things with a defeatist attitude, like you've lost the fight before it's even started. You don't have to give up so damn easily. Tears started to roll down her eyes as she tried, tried to fight back sobs. What the hell am I supposed to do if you're not out there with me? You think it, that I'll be able to survive out there? I'll be alone against all of them. I can't do this alone like you can, Clyde. I'm not you. I'm not smart. I'm not clever. I'm not tactical like you are. Hey guys, time's ticking. I'm none of those things. I got you stabbed because I didn't think straight. I'm not as smart or as strong as you think I am. Bullshit, you made one small mistake. But you otherwise played this perfectly. You trusted me when you needed to. You tricked Zep into swapping with me. You got Kishi in one round. You're not perfect, nobody's perfect, but you did everything you could. You could win this. You could make it out of here alive if you tried. <laughs> They're on freeze up blowing up Namek minute time. <laughs> but I wouldn't. What am I going to do if I don't have you by my side? I don't... I don't know what the hell I'd do. No matter how you look at this, I was always doomed to die. I can't just let you die, Devin. This is all my fault. I can't let you die. Devin's eyes furrowed as she turned back to the screen. I'm either killing you with a gunshot to the chest or a, sh or a stab through the chest. There's no choice here. I'm just murdering you. What difference would it make if you pick something harmless? This poison would kill me anyway. I hesitantly looked down at my own options. 
Press left to mercifully kill your opponent, lulling them to sleep with a sleeping agent and a toxin that will stop their heart. Or press right to painfully let them suffer from their current and future wounds. Well, I mean, when you say it like that... What kind of poetic bullshit is this? I... Either I put you to sleep and stop your heart, or I just do nothing. That's how I understand this. What's the point? I'm gonna die either way, so you might as well have a chance at living. Don't be dumb, Clyde. You're smart. You're observant. You know what will happen if you choose to kill me. She was right. I knew it all along, but I hoped that she hadn't noticed. Whatever punishment I select happens before my own. Meaning that if my punishment kills Devin, then the game will end and I won't have to suffer whatever she picks. Fanging it, fa <laughs> Pretending to be innocent isn't cool, you know? At least, if you put me to sleep, that'd be more peaceful than what I'd do to you. I could just pick nothing and let the poison kill me. You try that and I'll pick an option for you. What the hell do you care? I'm probably gonna die either from this poison or from something else. To teach you a lesson. Now choose, or I shall choose for you. You sick sadistic bitch. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about the ads. Hold on, the ads are coming up soon, so we're gonna we're gonna pause. Neither of us was willing to budge, but ultimately we had to make a decision. This felt as though it was the hardest decision I would ever have to make. Alright, well I only have one option. I only have one option, and that's kill and live. This is what she would want, isn't it? Am I being selfish? Am I just using her words an excuse to not feel terrible? Before I could even think more on, my, on it, my free hand pressed the left button. All I could do was look up at her with pained eyes. Make a decision and play the game as Devin and she can res Clyde at the end. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, my ads went on. Okay, so I won't do anything yet. Um, okay, alright. Um... Let's see, let's see. So is that... Oh, uh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, still no ads for me. I think they're broken. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I think it's fine. It's whatever. Twitch is gonna do what Twitch is gonna do, you know? I love that I just have little seizures open. Oh, uh, okay. Why do I have so many pings right now? That's from me. That's from Mudaye Rolls. That's whatever. Where's the last one from? Oh. Alright, is it done? <laughs> Am I done with pings? Looks like. I'm almost done with ads. Or at least the ads that they say are going right now. I... Like you guys. You're very cute. I'm sorry, I'm doing everything that I can not to look at the screen at this sad moment where I'm going to kill my best friend. I'm just happy that it's not very gory. That's really nice. Like, I'm still in pain, but it's not like I gotta see a whole bunch of blood, you know? Alright, ads are done, as Twitch says, so let's continue. Do I tell her that I killed her? Would that be the noble thing to do? Does honor even matter at a time like this? She's going to die. I killed her. Look good what a few more words mean when your life is done. Round seven is over. Punishments have been selected. The solo shall have their heart shot with a gun. The trio member will be put to sleep and then injected with a toxin that will stop their heart. Yeah. Ha. Huh. I knew you were smart, Clyde. I couldn't say anything. Tears had simply welled up in my eyes and were overflowing across my face. I mean, if anything, I don't know what's worse, 
taking her out in the first round or surviving to the last round and having to take each other out. Fucking squid game situation, you know what I mean? All the physical anguish and pain was nothing compared to knowing that Devin was knocking on Death's doorstep and Death was far too eager to answer. Dude, don't cry. You're not really a type that looks cute when you're crying. Stop. Stop making jokes when you're about to die. Damn it, you're... You're the only person here that I can trust, that I care about. What the hell am I gonna do if you're gone? You're smart, Clyde. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Damn. Hard to keep my eyes open. There's so much shit I wanted to say, but I guess I chickened out. Alright, I'll just say it, dude. You're one of the smartest and most determined people I know. That's why I know you can win this. I know you'll be able to figure things out. So don't blame yourself, alright? You gotta stop getting down on yourself and realize that you're not a failure. Pando, not now! <laughs> you're a spectacular one-of-a-kind guy, and... And... Devin! Devin! Devin, you wake up! Don't fall asleep! Damn it, Devin! Wake up, please! I, I can't do this without you! Devin, please. I'm not spectacular, I'm not. I'm, I'm just a failure. Congrats, Clyde, you've won! You defeated the other team and come out victorious. Confetti began to shower down from the sky, and Belle suddenly appeared behind me, putting her hands on my shoulder. That was an impressive show. I must admit that I'm quite proud of your performance. Bruh, can you chill? Can you chill? Can you bring your pep down like five notches? Oh, let's take care of your injuries now, shall we? Can't have you feeling less than perfect before the next game. With a snap of the finger, somehow all my injuries mended themselves. The pain vanished instantly. See? Good as new. I bet you're feeling super dandy right now. Don't fuck with me. I beg your pardon? With my body no longer being handicapped by the pain of injuries, I lunged at Belle with both arms. Rage and sorrow fueled my steps as I attempted to grab at her throat, but she poofed into a cloud of blue smoke before appearing, appearing right behind me again. Oh, come on, Clyde. You don't really think that you can hurt me here, do you? You're smarter than that. I squared up to her again, keeping my eyes locked onto hers. Bring her back. Bring Devin back. And if I were to refuse, then I'm not going to play your stupid games anymore. Hmm. That's going to be a bit of a problem, Clyde. You're going to ruin things for everyone if you don't play along. Maybe you need a little bit of motivation. Are you a carrot or a stick kind of person? Cut the crap. I don't know if you're some kind of god or a witch or whatever, but you clearly have some kind of power here. Bring Devin back to life. You're stubborn, but maybe that's your heart talking. Just do it! No. Heart. I swung a fist towards her and she simply sideswept out of the way. Such a passion. I knew I was going to like you the minute that you showed up. I swung again, trying to actually connect a blow rather than, rather than wildly whipping my arm around. But again, she simply moved just out of my reach. <laughs> Clyde, I literally do not care about anyone else here. So true. If you keep this up, Clyde, I might just have to kill you. And I don't like breaking my own rules, and more importantly, it'd be such a shame if you died right after Devin urged for you to live. You- You shut up! You don't get to talk about what she wanted or her final wishes. And what are you gonna do about it? Tee hee. <laughs> she raised a hand and closed it into a fist. I felt all the air in my lungs get squeezed out like the water in a sponge, and my body felt as though it was being constricted by rope. I'll be honest with you, Clyde. I don't break my own rules. So I'm not going to kill you. But remember that I can always pull upon your fears, your weaknesses, and torment you to make you act. This is my realm. This is my game. And you shall play it to the end to learn the lesson that all who have played before have learned. I stared up with her, wanting to curse as some force kept my voice silent. Remember this? In my realm, you play by my rules. You are not so special that you can make demands of my rules. And you are not the first nor the last that I will tell this to. Yeah, the lesson is you're a bitch. The intensity on her face softened quickly before she snapped her fingers and a door in the room opened. Now I suggest that you get some rest. You've still got a few rounds ahead of yourself if you want to win. And put aside that brash defiance and do what you want to do. 
try and win the game. I'd be very impressed if you were the first, after all. Toodles! She disappeared into a pluff of blue smoke, and eventually I felt myself unrestrained. I sat down for a moment, wallowing in self-pity and a smoldering anger. Devin wouldn't want me to throw away my chance at life. If I just gave up, then I might as well have given her the chance to live. That was the logic that I told myself, anyway. Just enough of an idea to pick myself off the ground and force myself to walk, rather than stay in a depressed stupor. I walked through a hallway, not even sure what I was walking towards. Eventually, I found myself in a similar lounge like when I first arrived. It was a bit bigger, and there was a room off to the side that looked like a kitchen and a bathroom as well. Thinking about it, I didn't feel hungry or thirsty. I can't imagine that Belle wants us to cook. And thankfully, I haven't felt that I needed to use a bathroom. Not yet, anyway. Is she just making this place look more homely for our comfort? Probably not. I see the other three large doors ahead of me. I guess that's where I'll be heading towards next once the others get here. I turn back and notice that there are four doors behind me. Obviously, there was the door I just left, which means that the others should be coming out of these doors. And if I remember right, the doors don't open until a game is finished, which means that Richard, Philip, Grant, and Jade should be doing their game now. I wonder if they were going to have to go through the same hellish ordeal that I was going to have to go through. Maybe... Maybe it'd be something different. I couldn't know, and chances were I'd get my answer soon enough anyway. I walked over towards one of the couches in the lounge and sat myself down on it, eventually lying just staring up at the ceiling. The silence of this room was uncomfortable, and all I could do was think about everything that just happened. All the pain I just suffered, all the words that were said, all the words that were unsaid. Everything just repeated in my mind over and over and over again. Like an endless nightmare, I was thinking about where things could have gone better, what choices I could have made to not have this be the outcome that I created change. Why did Devin say all those things? Why did she lie to me? I'm not smart or dependable or anything. If I was, I wouldn't have had to rely on some stupid, obscure online opportunity to help my mother. I'm just a failure, someone who couldn't get his act together and actually do what he was supposed to. That's all I've ever been. Except now I'm worse, because now my failures are causing others to suffer, to die. What the hell do I do? What does a failure like me even do? I guess it's self-explanatory, isn't it? I just... fail. Is that the end of the demo? Oh. What do you mean you got put on academic suspension? Who's this? I... I just missed a few too many exams that didn't turn in my homework a few times. A few times? Clyde, they don't suspend people for missing homework one or two times. And how do you miss exams? It'd be one thing if you don't do well on them, but apparently you just... miss them? How the hell does this happen, Clyde? It was those damn games, wasn't it? N no, I just... I slept in a few too many times. Don't lie to me, Clyde. I can see it on your face. I told you time and time again, don't get obsessed with those games. I warned you over and over again to focus on your studies. And all it took was one semester for you to completely ruin everything. Yeah, those damn video games. I... I didn't ruin everything. Clyde, what are you gonna do now? You can't go back for another year. A whole year! We had everything planned for you. We made compromises, and now it's just... Why couldn't you have put down those damn games for a few weeks? A few days and just focus on passing your classes. So here's what happened. He's been playing those visual novels about death. He's been playing Umineko. <laughs> That's it. Umineko and Higarashi for weeks. Don't you understand how important your future is? You can't just live in a fantasy where all you get to do is live in eternal bliss and entertainment. Are you even listening to me? Look up at me and tell me you understand. Clyde, look at me. You can't just run to the games when things get hard for you. I'm going to take care of this myself. If you can't see the problem, then I'm going to have to fix things for you until you realize what you have to do. What are you doing? Where are you going? Mom? <laughs> Mom, that's my computer. You can't just take it. Your choice, Clyde. You can keep your computer and go find somewhere else to live, or you let me keep it under lock and key until you get your act together. I'm tired of you resigning yourself to mediocrity. I know you can do better. You just have to try. You have to find something and not waste away. Are you listening to me? Stop looking down at that pitiful look on your face. Look at me. Look at me. Jesus Christ. R Richard. <laughs> yeah, I'm an entire ass adult. 
sleep poorly. What the hell are you doing watching me sleep? You were mumbling around in your sleep, so I figured I'd make sure you didn't roll off the couch and hurt yourself. The last thing you want is a broken nose from falling off your bed. I'd know. The concern is appreciated, but I don't move around in my sleep. <laughs> Richard, I was jealous. <laughs> That's good. I'll remember that next time. Well, I'll try to anyway. Hey, if you're here, that means you finished your game. Yeah, we actually just got in a few minutes ago. We? Mm-hmm. Jade, Grant, and myself all made it through. Grant and Jade are in the kitchen right now. So Philip didn't make it then. His face darkened for a moment, and he put his hands together inside. Yeah. Dad wasn't able to make it through the race in time. It's a shame. But I'll be okay. Dad was pretty adamant about being left behind. He wanted to be left behind? Our game was a race, or I guess more like an obstacle course. We were actually doing pretty fine, it's just... Well, for our game, only the first three who made it to the end would be allowed to live. And the loser who got fourth place was... Executed. That... That's horrible! Yeah, it's okay, he was old. Yeah, my dad's not exactly in running shape, to be honest. So I had to help him out through most of the course. At the end. I told him that I'd be fine getting left behind. Oh, hello! Thank you for the raid, Ferris V5! Let me, uh, let me... Give a shout-out. How are you? How was your game? How was Brave Fencer Musashi? And then let me do the government raid. The government raid? The government shout-out. The Twitch government shout-out. Yeah, I hope you're having a good one. We are playing a game called Game of Fortune. Uh, it is a death visual novel. It's a deadly visual novel. Please um, check the pinned comment for content warnings. Been good. Was killing a vampire zombies and doing a Zelda dungeon. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah, we um, we we killed our friend. So we're kind of dealing with the ramifications of that. <laughs> we're actually um, we're actually gonna finish up here soon. Um, and then we'll go see someone else. But until then, enjoy. For those that don't know, my name is Sesu. I'm a cozy Gorgon VTuber streamer. Uh, I play a variety of games, in a variety of games, including indie games, Nintendo Switch games, visual novels, dating sims, and death visual novels, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see. So he sacrificed himself for you. That's one way you could put it. Well, how else would you interpret it? Maybe he doesn't want to deal with whatever else might be coming up and took the coward's way out. You say that about your dad? Maybe he knew he wouldn't be able to get far, even if he got through this first game and wanted to save himself the hassle. Maybe he really believed in me and it wasn't a sacrifice as much as he genuinely believed I could win. Though, knowing my dad, he probably just wanted to go, so I'd try and make friends. Figures that if he's around, I'd just cling on to him. He's not wrong, though. How can you talk so casually about your dad's death like this? Aren't you... Aren't you angry? Aren't you upset? <laughs> rage! Give me your rage! Well, I'm not happy that he died in front of my eyes. But it's not like he's gone forever. Hello? Richard, tell me more. Tell me more, Richard. No one told me about this game. What kind of insane logic is this guy working on? So, it has to be that even though they die here, like, they're fine when they come back. Because she was talking about, Belle was talking about how, like, there were veterans. They played this game before. I'm sure they didn't all win. The dead are dead? They don't come back to life. Sure they do. No, no they don't. I guess no one really told you about how this whole game thing works, huh? Wasn't that obvious when we first met? I've never been to one of these dumb fortune games before. I don't understand how you're taking everything so calmly when people are dying. Richard just stared at me like a teacher who was disappointed in their student's lack of understanding. <laughs> Clyde, you weren't at initiation, weren't you paying attention? As if what he was saying was so obvious, so fundamental, that he was just awestruck as to how I didn't know of it already. 
Ah. I understand now. That's why you're so distraught right now. You had to kill three people. He spoke those words like he was just talking to a friend over coffee. Like I didn't just go through the most agonizing experience of my life. Ah, uh, sorry, I was jumping the gun there. You didn't necessarily kill them. It could have just been some kind of race. Or another four player game where any number of you could have died. That, or it was a one versus three game and you were on the one side and came out victorious. I guess that it's one of those options, right? What does it matter to you what happened? I don't want to think about it anymore. Your eyes, they're full of sorrow and guilt and shame. My guess is that you had, in some part, caused the death of your friend Devin, right? I felt my throat getting hot and my hands falling up into fists. You can't just solve all your problems with anger, Clyde. I was sick of hearing this creep talk. I didn't need to get psychoanalyzed right here and now. Just shut up, man. I don't want to talk about it. I felt my eyes watering up again. I tried to hide my face by rubbing my sleeves. I tried to hide my face by rubbing my sleeves against my face. I really need them to pick up a grammar editor. You weren't there. You you don't know what the hell we went through. I didn't want to kill anyone. I didn't want to hurt anyone. And in the end, Devin, she... She... How the hell am I supposed to pick between my own life and my best friends? Richard reached out and put a hand on my shoulder, slowly pulling my arm down. He gave an uneasy yet sympathetic smile. It's good that you feel pain and regret about it. It means that you're still human, that you aren't some horrible monster. I was worried that you could just go through killing someone and not feel a thing, but... You seem to genuinely be suffering. I can't say I understand exactly what it would be like to kill my best friend. But even leaving my father behind left a gnawing pain that still lingers in my heart. And if it's any magnitude stronger than that, then you're carrying a heavy burden. It's no wonder that you're more distraught than anyone thinking that you'll never see your friend again. How is this guy so perspective? It's like he's looking through my eyes and right into my very soul and reading my emotions piece by piece. It probably hasn't been less than an hour. Your heart is probably heavy with guilt. I don't know what it was about his words, but it felt as though he was opening doors and taking down barriers that were keeping all my sadness locked up. A stream of tears began to roll down my eyes, and my breathing quivered as it slowly devolved into choking sobs. I tried to muffle my crying under my arms. I tried my best to keep everything trapped inside, even now. Richard left for a few moments to grab some napkins and returned so that I could clean my face off with them. I don't know how long I cried for, but... After I settled down, he got me a glass of water. I didn't necessarily feel... good. But I did feel better. At least enough that I didn't feel a constant pressure in my chest anymore. Calm down enough yet? I think so. Thanks. By the way, I, uh... didn't really think you'd say those kind of things. You come across as a bit of a creeper. I get that a lot. But I'm not a therapist or a psycho... a psychologist. I'm just a painter. If I can't capture the mood or emotion of a painting, then I'd be pretty bad at my job. To me, I guess emotions are just drawn on faces, so I can make sense of them for a lot of people. That sounds like a superpower. I'm pretty sure it's just empathy, or some other innate thing in humans. I'm just a bit more aware of it, I guess. More importantly, I need to tell you that your friend Devin isn't really dead. Or at least, she's not going to be permanently dead. Just, can you explain to me how you know that? My dad told me that's how this game works. That's probably why he was so comfortable dying. Essentially, death doesn't quite work here in the same way. He told me that it's temporary, like taking a nap, and that eventually everyone wakes back up. I'm going to need something more concrete than your dad's word. Well, I've seen it happen. Does that count? You've seen it happen? You've seen people come back to life after death? Well, no, I haven't seen them, but... Four years ago, I saw people enter the same glowing gate that we did. Of course it was four fucking years ago! And then I also saw them come back out. So, they couldn't be dead. Wait, have you been here before? Here? In this place? Not exactly, but my dad and I did come to see this sort... Ceremony ritual thing happen. We wanted to participate in the fortune game four years ago, but they were already full. 
So we decided we'd just stay and watch. Honestly, it was about the same thing that we went through. A big speech, people lined up, then they went through the gate, and then they came back? Yeah, at 4.44 p.m. on the same day. The lights did the same thing that they did in the morning, making that blue gate, and then everyone walked right back out. So they all really did come back normal? They weren't like husks or clones or anything like that? I mean, they were the same people, but they were also different. I could see it in their eyes, something had changed. Maybe they were shocked by what they saw, or that they were satisfied by whatever they did in there. I guess if I came back after thinking I killed my best friend, I'd be pretty different too. Exactly, so... That's really all to say that things are probably going to be okay. I, I guess I feel a little better. If this is all, really all true. It's true, what he's saying, by the way. Grant walked over to us and handed me a sandwich on a plate. I asked him to make you something. Hope you don't mind. No, I appreciate it. I'm just, I'm a little curious how you know he's telling the truth. He looked away somewhat and shook his head. I, I just know. Can I leave it at that for now? It's, I suppose I'm just telling you so you don't end up losing your mind, thinking you've killed someone you can't bring back. Because there's a very stark difference between that and what's going on here. You sound as though you're personally familiar with what's going on here. I'd rather not talk about it. There's no good memories in this place. That's a shame. I was hoping I'd get to learn more about these things. Heck, I wanted to ask Zeph and Kishi, but... Why Zeph and Kishi? They played in the Fortune game four years ago, so I was going to ask them about it when I got the chance, but... It seems that they're gone. Which, you know, is kind of impressive. You beat veterans of the game. I can't imagine that's an easy feat. I don't exactly feel very proud about it, but sure. Really? They both played the game four years ago? That, or they had very extremely convincing body doubles or twins. That's strange. Why do you say that? It's... Well, I suppose I'm just wondering why they'd come here again. Personally, I think only a fool or a madman would try and enter this place after going in once. So they must have some good reason for coming here again. I suppose that depends on what they got out of the game itself, right? These wishes? I think that most people would probably risk a ton if it meant they could get a wish granted. Yes, that's if they were normal wishes, but... These aren't normal wishes? Not quite. But they're not really any reason to speak more on the subject. Oh, hello! Hello again with another raid! Hi, Wiz! How are you? Let me shout you out. Yo, I can't spell. I can't spell. There we go. No, there we go. How was Fortnite? And then let me do the, the government, uh... <laughs> the government Twitch shout-out. There you go! Thanks for hanging out with us! I really appreciate it. We are playing, um... A deadly game called Game of Fortune. Please peep the pinned message for content warnings. Um... And thank you for following. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad Fortnite was cool. We, um... We killed our friend. <laughs> but apparently, deaths here just don't last forever. So that's what we're really learning about today. Um, and we're also probably going to finish up soon, as soon as I can find a believable stopping point. So feel free to hang around. And for those that don't know, I'm Sesu, a cozy Gorgon VTuber. I play a variety of games, including indie games, dating sims, Nintendo Switch games, visual novels, and, you know, deadly visual novels. <laughs> They're gone. I doubt I'll get the chance to ask them about this topic this time around. Uh, this is also a demo, so, you know, there's grammar, grammar problems here and there. I guess you're right about that. Hey, are you people done being glum already? You've got absolutely no ability to read the room. Look, I get that we went through some terrible shit, but we should be living in the moment. We're alive and we gotta make the most of it. Now who wants a drink? I'll pass. None for me. No thank you. Chuh. I hope the others that come by are willing to have a drink. Are going to be willing to have a drink. 
Well, you won't have to wait much longer. The champs have arrived. God. I look towards the voice and see that William, Elizabeth, Lilith, and Laura have just entered the room. Oh, they all survived. They all look tired and beaten, aside from William, who seems to be as energetic as ever. Pass me a cup. I'm feeling high on life right now. Are you even old enough to drink? Of course I am. I'm 21 years old. You liar. You're 20. That is a lie. He's 20 years old. What does it even matter? This place isn't a bar. You want a drink? Go make it yourself. I'm not getting into trouble handling alcohol over to someone under the legal limit. Ugh, whatever. I'll go make something myself. I see that you all have made it past the first round. Congratulations. No congrats are necessary. It doesn't feel like much of a victory. Take small victories where you can. If you end up sullen and drowning in sorrow, you'll be frozen in place. Though I do have to admit, I am a little disappointed that Philip wasn't able to make it to the next round. Don't be. He made his choice and was content with it. I don't doubt it. He was always stubborn. He was always a stubborn kind that always wanted to do things his own way. Ha <laughs> ha Drowning in sorrow. Ha 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 We killed our friend. Oh. Did something happen to Philip? And where's Zeph, Kishi, and Devin? My father was executed upon failing to finish the game that we were in. Executed? It didn't look pain painless at least. Just got blasted through the head. That doesn't sound painless at all. I... What? Grammar! Hmm. Well, he's dead now, so he doesn't appear to be in any pain. And what about you, Clyde? Everyone that was in your group is dead aside from you. Gee, I didn't notice. I didn't ask for lip, I asked for an answer. What, it wasn't obvious enough? They're all dead. My stupid game had me play against Devin, Zeph, and Kishi, and we all had to take turns inflicting pain on one another. I had to kill them to win. They had to kill me to win. And you see the results. So are you happy? You had to kill them? I see. Sorry you had to go through that. It's regrettable, but people were going to pass on one way or another. Best to accept that fact now that you've lived it. It's almost as though dying is a part of the game, like we were all told at the beginning. By Bell, but sure. Yeah. I'm trying. I didn't come here today exactly preparing to kill my best friend. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Is there anything we can do to make you feel better? Laura! Read the room! I'm managing. I already had my cry, but thanks for the offer nonetheless. Okay, if you change your mind, I'll be around. I'm always happy to lend a helping hand where I can. She's like, wow, you just killed your buddy. Oof. Let me know if I can help. With what? Thanks. I'll keep it in mind. Care for a drink, ladies? It seems we've all gone through some troubling times. We should relax while we can. On a normal day, I'd probably take you up on your offer. <laughs> Will some hot cocoa help in the murder feelings? Indeed. But after what we just went through, I'd rather keep my mind as clear as possible. I'll have to pass as well. I'll take a drink, especially since we've gone through all the trouble of making it. Why is the old hag the only one that said yes? Jade, you're next on my list! What was that? Nothing here. To winning the first round. Wait, are we toasting? I just finished making my drink. Cheers! Okay. I'm gonna say right here is probably an okay stopping point. <laughs> because it's really late and I gotta get dinner. <laughs> so let me switch to my um just chatting screen for just a little bit of chat before we raid. Please stick around for the raid. Um, yeah, so thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm sorry we killed our best friend, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, am I right? Um, at least she's probably not dead dead. She'll come back and we'll figure that out together. Um, it is no longer Black History Month, but I am still black. And I'm black 365 days of the year. So thank you for supporting a black creator. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, killing best friends. Just a usual Thursday, indeed. Um, we are going to raid my good pal, Yuki. 
who is doing art today. What kind of art is she doing? Oh, she's doing art for, um... She hit 100 followers on Twitch recently. So she's doing art for that. Celebration art. All right. So, if you are a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. This is... Your raid message. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Here's your raid message. Please shower Yuki in love and praise. We love Yuki here. Um, please make sure to drink some water. Get up and get a stretch. We've been here for two and a half hours. I don't know how long the raiders have been sitting and watching, but your body will appreciate a good stretch. Get some water, especially me. I've been talking for two and a half hours. <laughs> and, um... Get some food, because for most people, it's food time or past food time. And then have a good sleep tonight, because tomorrow is Friday, so you need all the energy you have for it. Oh my god, Pando. <laughs> Pando. <laughs> Read the room. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna set up the raid. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I hope you have a good evening. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow here, same time, for, uh... Uh, uh, a space for the unbound. We're gonna continue on. It's been a fun time. I hope you enjoy it. Please join me for our rural indies Indonesia uh, indie game. Alright. 